So there is a very heavy focus on Cooper and Lucy in this one and what's going on in the vaults. But before I get into it, I just want to thank you all for subscribing and liking the videos and uh, all of the positive reception I've been getting so far. So uh, thank you for all of that. Uh, we're trying to get this channel to at least like 100 subs. That'd be pretty nice. So uh, every sub counts. There are a couple things that I wanted to talk about in this particular episode, like very important revelations that happen. Ass jerky don't make itself. So it opens up with us getting to see a rad roach up close. And that's like one of the staple things about Fallout is the rad roaches. Oh my God. Oh, that's not normal. They're not supposed to be that big. They're everywhere. They're the most common enemy type you're going to be coming across pretty much. They're like the level one in any kind of like MMO. But I love this scene because it, it's a, it's really important because it sets the stakes for Cooper, right? This entire show, Cooper's been downing vials and it's not said even now what those vials even are. It's clear what they do, just not what they are. So Cooper has a buddy and you know, all ghouls have to stick together, right? So obviously Cooper's friend Roger is also a ghoul just like him. He's also out there looking for the bounty that the Enclave threw out because they want they want their doctor back. They want that head. Um, and I like that Roger calls Lucy one of those smoothies. <laughs> yeah, because that is, you know, that is a thing. Hey, kid, I was wrong about you. Good job. Ghouls don't exactly have uh, very smooth skin, right? They're, I don't know if they have skin, actually, if you think about it. He needs those vials. Yep. So this is where it gets interesting, right? So Cooper's friend Roger has said that he it's been 28 years since he started to show symptoms of becoming feral and that Cooper has been going, he's been lasting the longest out of any of the other ghouls in the wasteland. How are you feeling? No. <laughs> So it's not specifically said when he started showing signs, but clearly he is supposed to be the most like superior ghoul, like the caricature of a ghoul for this show. It's sort of like how Lucy is like an amalgamation of all of the main characters of like every Fallout game, pretty much. I know they generally don't have much of a personality and they all kind of fall in a line where it's like basically chaotic good. You know, I don't know if that meme's still relevant, but yeah. So Cooper's getting a little hungry. He knows that his friend Roger's holding out on some ass jerky. So he, 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 he like, mercy kills him, basically. Uh, they're both out of vials. One of them is going to become feral. One of them's hungry. Something has to give. But you gotta do what you gotta do in the wasteland. Um, Lucy is slowly coming to terms with that. And I mentioned in earlier episodes, Lucy's gonna have to do some disturbing stuff. This is one of the most disturbing things that she has to do. Something I don't think I could do if I was in the wasteland. But before we get to that, Lucy mentions that, okay, my father, you know, he survived this drought that we had in the vaults and he'd never resorted to doing anything like this, basically cannibalism, right? And Cooper's like, I wonder about that. Uh, he, first he asked, okay, what was your father's name? And she says it was like, Okay, her father's last name was McLeod. That's not it. Mc McLeod? McLeod. Hmm. Lucy McLean? McLeod? Fuck. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but the letters are there. Basically, Cooper recognizes the last name. That's important. And it's almost like, oh, I recognize that last name. He's like, huh. Huh. Interesting. And then he starts carving up his friend Roger in a very gory scene. And it seems like this that really make this show stand out among other shows, other kinds of like video game adaptations into movies or TV shows. It's it's gory, edgy stuff that and it's 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 the tone. It's like the the uplifting, goofy tone. Somebody described it like satire, and I think that's perfect. Speaking of which, the developer for the original Fallout series actually made a review on the Fallout TV show. Uh so link in the description if you want to go check that out. Why the fuck am I doing? all the work but come on vaulted ass jerky don't make itself i don't think this is the part where it's like ooh. Uh. morning woody yes. morning reg Nice work on your posters. Well, thanks, Reg. I've been admiring yours as well. Also, I just want to mention that I like how nice the politics are in the vault, in Vault 33. Like, I wish politics were actually this nice in real life. The world would be a much different place. I don't know if it would be a better one, but a different one. So Lucy and Cooper's uh, journey is about to come to an end, and this is the part where Lucy gets so thirsty that, you know, they're out there in the wasteland. It's dry, it's hot, you're gonna need a ton of water. Even radioactive water, it turns out. I love how the scene is designed. It actually reminds me of the Chernobyl HBO series that came out my like, years back. It was also, like, top-tier shit. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. But uh, they have a Geiger counter going off, like, increasingly louder and louder. Oh, 
Ah, and Lucy just goes for it and starts drinking this water. And I say water, you don't know that it's water. It's, you know, water. Where did it come from? How often does it rain in the wasteland, right? Has, has any Fallout game ever had rain? Probably incredibly goddamn rare, I'll say that much. Now, the Super Duper Mart has been in Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, I believe. And it's always overrun by raiders. And that basically is exactly how it is done in the show. But as you'll see in the next episode, this is run by what is considered a legitimate business, at least according to some uh, local law enforcement. And that's also in quotation marks because it's not exactly official. Like, how would you enforce the law in the wasteland? The only organization that can really do that is the Brotherhood, and they've got their own agenda going on here. So that is pretty cool. Now, Cooper does catch up to Lucy, and then he's like, all right, where do you think you're going? And he basically trades her off. But here's a very cool scene. You get to actually see a Mr. Handy. Finally, from the trailer, from the teasers, you get you saw that Mr. Handy, now it's in the show. He says that he's a Mark IV made by General Atomics International. Now that is one of the major, like there's four major companies basically. One of them focuses on making robotics and they made them like in the 2030s. I think the Mr. Handy was made in like 2037, I believe. Bear in mind that in the Fallout world, the nukes dropped in 2077. So they are a bit in the future for us. That's what I am. You seem to be a woman. And it's just cool seeing a Mr. Handy again. Like, I've always loved that character. I love the the, the over-the-top, well-to-do attitude. But yeah, no, it's like Lucy sort of trusts Mr. Handy for a little bit. There, you've lost a finger. Ah, that won't do at all. Let's get you taken care of. Um, he goes to a, a drawer, and he has a drawer of fingers, and it's like... I don't know, that, that should set off some red flags. As I'm, I'm, if I saw a drawer of fingers, I don't care, I'm leaving. But he begins to reattach the finger, and it's like, it's it gives me, it reminds me of like Resident Evil Village, where Ethan, the main character, keeps getting his hand, like, put back on. It's like, is that how that would work? Can you just like, stitch a finger back on, and then it would just, like, really? But yes, this Mr. Handy is not a good Mr. Handy. He, he's like, I'm gonna harvest your organs. Just sit still, please. He's like, Bzz. I'm simply going to harvest your organs. Huh? But I'm just to go back to Vault 32 for a second, because like, there's a lot of revelations that happen here, and it's very, it's actually still, even though I finished the series, I don't fully understand what happened here, and I'll explain what's going on. So Lucy's brother Norm and the uh, the other guy, as I called him, they both decide to explore Vault 32 to just sort of like figure out what's going on. It's all Norm's idea, of course. The first thing that he notices is that the, all the crops are dead, so he's like, okay, this whatever happened to them had to have happened a very long time ago. And once he checks somebody's pit boy. It's says, okay, the last biosignature detected in this vault was over two years ago. You got your time frame as to when this happened. And then what you see is like, it reminds me of Event Horizon, uh, one of the hell scenes where just everybody is dead. Like basically one of the flashbacks. And this is where it gets like, it gets curious. So there was a revelation that happened in Vault 32. And this is me kind of, this is spoilers a little bit. This wasn't exactly stated in the episode. You, you see people that are stabbed with like foosball table parts, like a pipe going through this guy. Other people are extremely strangling each other. Basically, they all killed each other. And on the wall, you see, like, it says, we know the truth. So, as I said, there was a revelation in Vault 32. They, they learned something, and it, it, supposedly it drove them crazy. Now, that's where it gets a little confusing, for me at least, and if you know, explain in the comments below, please, I'm, I would love to know. Why would they start killing each other knowing what the truth actually is? And I, I'm debating whether or not I should say it, or just save it for later. So it looks like they tied the Overseer up, and they just killed him, right? Now, I can understand that. That makes sense to me, knowing the revelation. And yeah, it's, it, it, Google it, or maybe just watch the show if you want to know what that revelation is. I'll get to it eventually, right? I don't understand why everybody would go crazy and kill each other. I can understand other people, but yeah, that's where that's going to sit for a bit. At least until we get to that in like episode mm, six or so. They went bananas. It still doesn't explain how the raiders got in. They need a pit boy to open the door. They had one. Who's? My mom's. That was done over two years ago, and yet we have another mystery. Vault 32 was opened from the outside by supposedly Lucy's mother. That's interesting. It's almost like somebody didn't want Vault 32 to know the truth, whatever revelation they learned. That still doesn't explain why they went crazy, though. Here comes one of the creepy scenes. I I'd say a scene that could give me nightmares. <laughs> So there's a lot of ghouls in that super duper mart that were stored in glass containers. One of them is really creepy. She keeps repeating, my name is Martha. It it's like for a Justice League reference, probably. <laughs> 
It's not. I know. I know it's not. Okay. Uh, but there's two junkies just sitting on the couch, not a care in the world, probably high off their ass. <laughs> they barely notice that the, the Mr. Handy and Lucy are there and they're like, oh yeah, go, go go harvest the organs elsewhere that doesn't really go well right you know obviously lucy's going to get away she ends up kicking the saw blade off and frying the mr handy and then we cut back and she's like holding the robot hostage like i'm gonna do it uh, if you don't do what i say and it's like it's a goddamn robot but we also see a braxo there and you know they don't mention a braxo it's not exactly an easter egg i guess but uh braxo is one of the very sought after chemicals in i think fallout 76 i believe and speaking of which i do like fallout 76 okay <laughs> I'm not one of the bandwagoners of that, or as somebody mentioned, I put 100 hours into that shit when it first came out, and I might even consider streaming it soon, so follow me on twitch.tv slash John Odds. Anyways, Lucy does something, I mean, this is what a Vault Dweller would do, right? The the good, the goody Mr. Two Shoes, then whatever. She opens up all the vault. She, wow, forget it. She didn't do that. She didn't open all, all the vaults. That'd be fucking chaos. She opened up all of the glass containers and let all the ghouls out. Well, not all of the ghouls. She later does that, and the guys in the couch are like, "You don't want to do that." And uh, it turns out those are all the creepy ones. Uh, they're the feral ones, basically, including the Martha of ghoul, which is going to give me nightmares. And then she realizes the mistake she made and she gets the hell out of there and those ghouls end up killing everyone. She tries to spare the Martha ghoul. <laughs> it's funny. I don't like she tries to jump at Lucy. She jumps way over Lucy. If you if you look at the, the I don't know if you want to call that choreography, but she does jump way over. But now that those two guys are dead, you know, their very legitimate business has been interrupted and you're going to see the consequences to that in the next episode. It's not going to be a big deal, actually. I don't know why I'm hyping it up, but there's a bunch of vials there on the couch and Lucy. He, like grabs a couple of them he goes outside cooper's still sleeping from his nap he, he she hands some over and she reinforces the idea that yeah she won't become well she hopes you know she's not going to become like cooper she's not going to just take and take from the wasteland but she's going to try and like lead by example i suppose right and that's the last we see of her this episode cooper heads back in cooper then goes to the uh super duper mart and he finds a box of vials and he's like hell yes yeah, there's like 40 of them there. I don't know if he's ever had that many at one time. But before he grabs those vials, actually, he does like every drug in the room. He's like, he's like squirting the like the syringe into his mouth. He's like s snorting a bunch of wh whatever that would be. I guess there's some kind of thing where ghouls, I'm like, I guess they don't die from overdoses and stuff like that. So they can just do what they want. Like, like there's a lot of things they're immune to, I suppose. But this is where we get a very cool scene. It's one of the better scenes to end off a show with for like a cliffhanger sake he finds a vhs tape or the equivalent to that in the fallout universe of one of his movies and he puts it in and it is the intro scene from the last episode i believe i actually used it in my intro where he has the guy on the ground and he's like you're ugly there's ugly strong and dignity and you i'll give you two out of three in that front and cooper's sort of remembering who he was like it's been 200 years and that's hard to fathom but that would change a person. That would probably change a person completely. I love this scene because like Cooper, there's like a glimmer of hope, right? And it really makes you question why at this point Cooper is hanging on. This story does unravel a decent bit in this series, but not fully. And I'm so glad they greenlit a season two of this because I'm loving this show so far. I mean, I love this. Show. I've watched the goddamn thing, right? So I'd like the show. And I really need to know more about Cooper's backstory. They left, they they didn't finish it, but this is the beginning of us seeing that, okay, he's becoming the good person I thought he'd be by episode one. They're holding off on that a good bit, which I like a lot. But that that is basically what happens in this episode, episode four of Fallout. If I got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. I know like there's a lot to the Fallout lore. Like there are various interpretations of what a ghoul is based on the lore. And I know there's this, this um, let's say a dichotomy between Fallout fans. It's kind of like Star Wars with the originals and prequels, and then I guess now sequels. Um, with Fallout, it's like Fallout 1 and 2, and then it's when Bethesda bought the company, and now you have like a new set of lore that people, at least some people, don't really take too seriously. Um, it depends on what side you fall on. For me, I'm all good with everything. I, you know, I don't really pick a side on it. I just enjoy the game for what it is. But anyways, um, my, my point was that, you know, good shit i don't necessarily mind how they change the ghouls if if it's like okay if you got a heavy dose of radiation i know i said in one of my earlier episodes that like yes if you got a lot of radiation would you become a ghoul 
I said no because I thought it happened on the onset of the nukes. So yeah, there's a lot to know. Overall, though, I would I would rate this like a this was a really good episode. Like I said before, this is a side quest episode, not necessarily filler. I would still give it like a nine out of ten. It gave me everything I want. There were there was Easter eggs, references. Like it stayed, it stayed pretty loyal to the Fallout lore that I know. There's nothing that really stood out. There's something very, I want to say egregious, but that has like a negative connotation to it. Um, that happens, I believe, two episodes from now. Um, that is the only thing in this series that that made me question some things, and I'll get to it, I suppose, when the video comes out. Well, like I said, 9 out of 10. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I believe right now we're at 15 subscribers. It'd be cool to get this to like 30 or like a 100 or something like that. It'd be pretty sweet. I know I'm grabbing this microphone a lot, but it's just very addictive. I've been getting a lot of positive feedback so far. So, of course, thank you all for watching. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. And then bam, bam.